is Lee Chung, and I um, I'm a retired federal employee from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Well, I have been living in Flushing since 1971. Bought my first house here. At that time, I was living in Chinatown mm -hmm. and was too crowded. And then we decided, you know, to uh, move out of the city. And so we look around, and the first house we saw was in Flushing. And then we bought a house in Flushing back in 1971. And most, the, the reason that we bought it, I think Flushing is essentially the center of the world because uh, half an hour you can go to JFK, which can go everywhere. And then within domestic flights, you can go to LaGuardia, you know, 15 minutes. And you can go to any museum uh, within you know, 45 minutes ride from Flushing. So I always consider Flushing is the center of the world, and it's, it should be access to any place that you want within, you know, within an hour. At that time, in China, in uh, Flushing, there's not that many Asians. Uh, I think before, I think some Japanese used to live around here, and then they move away. And I think I'm one of the very first Asian that, you know, uh, other than the Japanese, which they are actually uh, executive sent to Japan, sent to here by Japan, and then they, they live around here for a little while. Uh, when we moved in 1971, there's no Chinese school. I think there's only one, which is on 40, I think it's 40th Avenue, right now, right in the corner of uh, 88 corner. I think right the little shop there. And then they subsequently they expand a little more they call it Tai Dao. It's mainly Main Street in, in Chinese. And they have one I think is across the library. At that time that's a library there? There might be a library there already. I think. And then subsequently they moved to Union and and uh, Union and uh, Northern Borough. So a lot have been changed since then, obviously. And then the Asian, the Chinese, the Korean, and the Indians, and moved in uh, subsequently. But that's much, much later. When my, my kid was young, my wife, is, she's a trained architect, and, uh, and she wanted to have something to do when the kid was in school. And then we, uh, she went to uh, my nephew in California. She have, he is also have a trophy store. And they said, hey, that's something that he, she like to do. And then when we came back, and then we rented a, a store in Prince Street in the basement. And that's how we started about 19 years ago. So at that time, our kid was young. So she was able to uh, drop them off the school and then have something to do. And then about 3 o'clock, we closed the store and went back and picked the kid home. Mm -hmm. and, and we subsequently, we actually surprised that we actually last for 19 years. <laughs> well, I think they will be just like Midtown and Downtown in 10 years. Uh, got a lot of people interested in developing here, and uh, going to be a lot of high rise, you know, uh, tall buildings, and a lot of investment will come in here. I think they mostly is uh, either from China or from Asia, and knowing Chinese, whatever they buy, they use don't sell, so they will keep the property for a long time. So. Uh, so I would, I would say 10 years, I don't know whether they will extend the number seven train. They have been talking about extend it to, you know, further down to Bayside. So if they do that, and I think this will be a growing area, will be another center uh, in, in New York City. Uh, will be like the old Jamaica, you know, I don't know. Usually Jamaica was really a shopping center and I think with the sky view and many of the 
tall buildings around here, pretty soon sure this will be just like downtown Manhattan or midtown Manhattan. Yeah. Maybe not that many offices, but there will be a lot of mixed use buildings, you know, living upstairs and, and then uh, a shop and banks and, and on the lower floors. So that, that will, I think that will, be hap will happen in 10 years.